Blog Talk Radio. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, world? It's badass thugging like I usually do. And you better turn it up, bust some speakers out, because we off the motherfucking cup. You dig how we do it? Dog Pound Gangsters 2000 and beyond. Black. Yo, yo, check this out. This is your girl, Cola Coke, and I'm chilling with my boys right here on Off the Cuff Radio. We off the cuff right now. You big? Well, uh, oh, oh, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Lil Yap from UNLV. Bragging them from the river. Cooling with my homies and my family at Off the Cuff Radio. Y'all be sure to tune in on Fridays and get the latest scoop and find out what's happening. You hoit me? Tiffany and this Queen Queens is your girl's favorite bartender. And we're from Sex on the Rocks Podcast. All right, you're now tuning in to Off the Cuff Radio. Yeah, because they keep representing that world hip hop. Yo, much love. All right. Hey, y'all, this is Princess Daisy giving a shout out to King Eric and Off the Cuff Radio. Keep doing your thing, puppy. Mm. Hey y'all, this is Stacey Lachey, giving a shout out to King Eric and Off the Cuff Radio. What's shaking, y'all? This is the grand. One half of Lost Cause and one third of that drive time thing. Sending my love to the homies over at Off the Cuff Radio. Tune in every Friday night for some real, still hip hop conversation. These dudes are the connoisseurs of this thing. You already know what it is. BX Stand Up, Hud City, we're shaking. Peace. Yo, this is Joe Fresh to Dine, and y'all tuned in to the most raw, uncut show on radio. The Guillotine Team, Off the Cuff. And yo, Eric Sandman, Off the Beast Clown, man. I got the glow, Bruce Leroy, yeah, I got the glow, Bruce Leroy, I got the glow, 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 Bruce Leroy, I got the glow, 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 yeah, Bruce Leroy, Rocket watch him, but I got a pocket rocket for him. I try to tell him that they know my body, now they caught up in the storm. I try to tell him I'm on ball again, ball again, ball again, ball again. They see it. It's time to go again, go tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Believe it. I'm back on the scene. The rest is so clean. That's all the green. I ain't the king. I hold a crown. I am a god. I am the most. Brought in the wings like a Moses. Part of my soldiers. But anything moving is over. I got the glow. Bruce Leroy. Yeah. I got the glow. Bruce Leroy. I got the glow. 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 Bruce Leroy, I got the glow, yeah, Bruce Leroy, they call me Bruce when I step in, you know I got them rubber bands on me, yeah, I like my baddies on the pole, I like my duchess being rose for me, yeah, it started storming in the club and you could tell from my my bands was on me, yeah, I got the shorty and she with it, she do anything to get it poppin', yeah. I'm back on the scene, the fresh is so clean, that's all the green, I ain't a king. I hold a crown, I am a god, I am the most is, brought in the ways like a Moses, part of my soldiers. But anything moving is over, I got the glow, Bruce Leroy, yeah. I got the glow, Bruce Leroy. I got the glow, 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 Bruce Leroy. I got the glow, 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 yeah, Bruce Leroy.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the deal, y'all? This is your boy King Ed the Great, and we got a very special episode lined up. Sponsored by Buddy Boy Entertainment, Dirty Basement, and now sponsored by Jesse's Boutiques. So you can check that out at www.jessiesboutiques with an S dot com. I got my man T Max with the facts in the building. Jill, yeah, what it do? Friday night, OTC and the place to be, man. King Eric, myself, of course, shout out to our co-host, Ella and Sam, and Lady Chinchilla, so Ella and Trilla and Spirit. Yeah, King, we got another one, man. And, yo, go, this is a really special one, man. Tell our audience who we got tonight. Let me shoot the breeze for you right here. This is a special guest right here. Let me tell you guys the reason why. The Terror Squad. Had nothing but assassins on that microphone. We talking Fat Joe, Big Pun, Cuba Link, Armageddon, Triple Sace. But this man right here, he was the balance of all that hardcore shit. This man right here brought the soul into the terror squad. And you can hear it on a lot of the classic tracks that he blessed the squad with. Including especially Yeah Baby. And he's still putting it down... 20-something years later. So, without further ado, let's bring on my man, Tony Sunshine, baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up, bro? What's What's going on, man? man? Happy to have you on, my brother. It's a blessing, man. It's a blessing to be here. I appreciate you sharing this platform with me. How are you? We good, man. Hey, we good, man. man. We maintain it. Staying quarantined, you staying out the way? Yeah, man. Man, that quarantine yeah. got me bad. I ain't had a fresh <laughs> up in two weeks going on, so I'm maintaining. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all good though, man. We 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 alive and well. You know, uh, you still on the grind. You know, this shit ain't 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 ain't. It's not for everybody, but if you strong minded and you built for it, you're gonna survive. As you can see, you're still on your grind. You on the phone, we still doing this interview, we still moving along. So I call that being blessed. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Definitely, man. Definitely, man. Tony Sunshine, this T Max from VA. We're so privileged. We're so honored to have you on the show. Um, definitely your one hundred percent in terms of all the vocal touches that you've added to his King aforementioned, you know, the you know, Terror Squad hit. You know, you definitely brought that soul, you know, from a Latin flavor, you know, of course, you know, in the you know, in the spirit of course of Rita Moreno and Tigo you know, Tigo Calderon and Tito Puente and all of, you know, Latin musicians, man. Um I guess we start from your beginnings. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where you came up and, you know, how you got into the game. Uh, I mean, the folks know I'm from the Bronx. I'm from the BX. I'm, I'm, I'm from the South Bronx. I'm from uh, a place they call Forest Projects. And, uh, you know, that's where I met Joe. That's where I met some of the fellas at. And that's, that's pretty much where I embodied the uh I embody the hip hop and R and B sound that you guys get connected to the terror squad, you know, was at that place we call Forest Projects. You know, that's where it was that, that's where it all started. That's where Terror Squad was born and that's where Tony Sunshine was born and that's pretty much what it is. Definitely. Oh, oh, somebody somebody. Uh, I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. That's, Goodbye. That's different. That's pretty different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was pretty my, different. Oh, my fault. Yeah, my gotta, fault, I gotta, y'all. I was I trying to I was trying to use this this function so I could try to bring Illar the Sandman on. I, my bad, y'all. I was thinking nobody could hear. Heard it. you. Heard you, heard you. Good. Yeah, well, that was pretty much it, man. That's that's where I'm from. I'm from Forest Projects. I'm from the Bronx, and you know that's pretty much how 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 Tony Sunshine came about. You know what I mean? Definitely. What was it like so, coming up in those days? Of course. Oh, go ahead, King. Go ahead. Go ahead, King. 
the golden yeah, man, the golden era. Building off what T Mac was talking about when you coming up in those days, man, where did you find your musical inspirations? My musical inspiration as far as what though, like like which part? Like R and B. I had many uh R and B. My inspirations came from, you know, Lionel Richie and Kenny Rogers, uh, uh Pivo Bryson. Uh, Kenny Lattimore, you know, different, different, different folks from different eras, but you know, I took bits and pieces from everyone, and and pretty much created my own sound. You know, those are some of my inspirations. Some of them, definitely. And as you, you know, as you were saying, you know, you came up in the golden era, of course, the Bronx, you know. You know, KRS, you know, so many legends. And, of course, you know, Fat Joe would be in, would end up being in that pantheon as well of some of the legends. You know, Big Pun. Um, what well, was let me, like well, let me see? tell you, let me, go ahead, before go ahead. we go on, let me tell you, as you mentioned those folks, as you mentioned those folks, keep in mind that I'm way younger than them. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was I was like the baby right. running around with Joe and them. And so, you know, KRS-One is definitely a super legend and, and, and he's a teacher and, you know, but like he was a little bit, just a tad bit before my time. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Right. But one, yeah, the one thing about it, you know, Sunshine is the fact that, as you said, you were already coming up, you know, being in the Bronx, you know, you see so much and, you know, it carries such a pedigree in terms of the tradition that, right. You know, so many people that, you know, come from there. And as you really found yourself, you know, when did you really, you know, you already mentioned your influences coming up. When did you really find yourself thinking, you know, this is something I could really do? Because you said you were, you know, years behind Joe in terms, you know, you're the baby of the bunch. So it was basically you're watching all of them come. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, as 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 I said before, you know, many different interviews, I discovered, we discovered, my mom and I discovered mm-hmm. that I could sing when I was five years old, five, six years old. So prodigy. it's been a passion. It's been a passion mm-hmm. and it's been a dream ever since I could remember. And ever since I could remember, you know, uh, with all due respect and just, 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 just saying what it is, Joe is not the first celebrity or the first person I had met and came across and, you know, shared my talent with. As a kid, I sang and shared stages with many Latino uh, celebrities and stars before I discovered English music and knew that that is exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I sang salsa music. You know what I mean? Okay. I sang Spanish yeah. music. So I had, I, I had, I had, did many shows way before I, I, I introduced myself to Joe. It's just that, you know, Joe just embodied a whole different element, a Latino and hip hop. I had never really seen that. You know what I mean? Coming from from where I was from and, and, and just, you know, coming from the hood, I had never seen a Latino hip hop artist or, or, or a respected one anyway. You know what I mean? So that was sort of different for me. And I had already fell in love with R&B music. And I had already fell in love with soul music. And I had already discovered that type of sound. You know what I mean? So uh, that's how that came about. So at like 13, I introduced myself to Joe. And I told him that I sang. He told me to sing some for him. And I did. I sang Forever My Lady by Joe to see. And... The rest is pretty much history. That's how that came about. I met Joe and sang for him, but of course, you know, I had to wait my turn. I had to wait my turn right. like everybody else. I was but 13 years old. I needed guidance. My mom wasn't trying to hear it. You know, I, they weren't trying to hold my hand, so they had to do what they had to do, and I had to wait till I was old enough to, to really tag along and make the moves I wanted to make, and by that time, you know, he had met Pun, and a lot of different things has transpired and, and took place, and you know, I had to wait my turn. You know, and, and it's and it's uh, you know, and that's one thing I think a lot of times artists you know have to understand. You know, even when you meet people who are already established in the game, is that it's not 
a process of meritocracy just by association. It's a seasoning. Right. You know, it's you know, it's actually yep. just taking the time to process. Now, up until that point, yep. you said you had already been doing shows here and there. Tell us what your first show was like as a performer, because before you actually made the celebrity, you know, you know, stage, you were, you know, like anybody, you know, you were polishing your craft. What was it like in terms of your first right. show that you ever did? Well, as a kid, as a, as a kid, as a child, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a good kid in school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I, 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 I didn't pay gotcha. much attention in school, and I was pretty much always in trouble with the teachers and getting sent to the principal's office or the dean's office and things of that nature. One right. one particular class that I was good in and one particular class that the teachers always loved me and defended me tooth and nail was music class, music Anything that had to do mm-hmm. with music or drama or acting, things like that. So naturally, I would join the school glee clubs. I would join the school choirs. I would join the choirs in any church that would possibly receive me and have me because I loved to sing and I just wanted to sing. You know, I would go to right. the Christian churches. I would go to the Pentecostal churches. I would go to the gospel churches. I would go to the Catholic churches. I would go to any church that I knew were having the choir sing on that particular day just so that either I could be part of it or I could listen to it, you know. So um, I became head of the glee club in school, and I utilized some of those things that I had heard in these churches and some of that. And I think that my very first show very very first show that I sang solo really and I got like a whole incredible response Uh, I think I was in fifth grade and I sang God Bless America with a piano behind me and then the choir the school choir joined in like mid song but like my very first 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 show was that and I opened up my mouth to sing and the crowd went crazy. And it, 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 the funny part about it is that we, we was competing with like 13 different other schools. And it was, yeah. it was kind of like a competition and we were competing with 13 different other schools. And I think that we took like second or third place, you know, because there were some other pretty talented individuals, you know, that performed that day. But ultimately, that was my first major show that I got a standing ovation as a kid. And I remember that feeling so vividly that, you know, I knew. I knew that that's what I wanted to do forever. You know, um, and that's something that I think is understated because I really want to get your viewpoint on this because a lot of people try to say that in terms of the art. And for you being as a youth who, you know, was, you know, got into things here and there being mischievous, um, a lot of people try to downplay the arts in terms of how integral and essential that is for developing young people that may be on the fringe and that may be the element to save their life because they have an outlet that, you know, uh, enables their creativity and expression. From your personal, because oh, a lot no, of you it, know, school it, systems have... Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting totally, I understand totally what you're saying. For me... Yeah. It is a fact. It is not a myth. Mm-hmm. It is a fact that music saved my life. It is. It right. is. It is a fact that coming from where I'm coming from, and, and 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 growing up the way I grew up, and seeing the things that I've seen, if it wasn't for music, I'd have most likely indulged in some of those things or became part of those things, and you know, uh, I wouldn't be here today sharing this story with you. You know, I appreciate some of those teachers, music teachers, because they understood that I was an individual that wasn't easy. I was an individual that was going pretty much through a lot of things. But this was my outlet. This is what was making me happy. This was what was helping me, you know, uh, motivate and move forward with whatever it is that I needed to be doing to, to, to... to maintain in school, and they allowed me to have that. They didn't take it from me. 
They could have took that from right. me because because I wasn't behaving properly in other classes. They could have took it from me because I acted a certain way and I was acting out and and, 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 and and looking for attention in all the wrong ways. But they understood that this is all I had at the moment. This is what, this is what might save the kid's life in the future. So let's try to figure him out through music. Let's try to figure mm. him out, you know, through 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 the power of music. You understand? And I think that was very important and and very instrumental on helping me survive and helping me get through some of the things I was going through as a child. You know. Definitely. As far as as, yeah. as as the era, you know, when I say going through, through things as a child, you know, coming from the South Bronx, coming from from where I'm from, you know, in the late '80s into the early '90s, it was really bad. It was really serious. You know what I mean? That you had to have tough skin to survive, and you know there was some pretty bad things happening in the streets. So. It was tough to survive, and music was just a way to escape. Not only for me, but for everybody. Hey, you know what I yeah. like also that you touched on the aspect of being involved with the church heavily, because I think that's what makes a lot of people find their trademark sound, and that that's where you can hit that right. soul note, and you can and they can really feel it. Just like with a lot of the hooks right. that I heard you do, I'm like, yo, this this is one bad cat. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Man, you know, uh, um, shit. There's just so many artists in the game that have that that come from a church background, that come from singing with a choir, and you know, they really don't touch on that on 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 that story. They really don't give it the light they should. Like, don't be ashamed of that. That is an amazing thing to talk about. You know what I'm saying? I think that's right. pretty amazing that you that 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 you can share that story and you know, um I'm telling you the truth. I really, really was a part of <laughs> it, I, I was just religion I was religion hopping, you know, with all due respect. I was religion hopping because I was intrigued with the music. I was intrigued with you know, all the different sounds and the different religions and the different is all the same. But you know, when you go to a Pentecostal church, they sing the songs differently than they would sing it at a Catholic church. When you go to a Catholic church, right. they sing songs differently than they would sing at a gospel church. You know, and so forth. So it was very intriguing to me. And again, I took bits and pieces of all of that and you know, made it my own sound, so to speak. So it's a great story to share. You, you shouldn't be ashamed of your of your roots and your background ever. And that's, and that's real, Sunshine, because I think a lot of times, you know, you really have to, people have to understand um, there are people that develop their gift and it's always there. You know, you have, you know, like you said, uh, when you look at a lot of people who started in the church, like, of course, Whitney Houston, you know, rest in peace, you know, with her family one up of the in greatest. New Jersey, you know. Yeah. One of the greatest. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, of you course. You got Casey you know, and JoJo. I, yeah. You got Casey yeah, and JoJo. Yeah. You got Brian McKnight. You have mm -hmm. uh, Tyrese. You have, uh, you know, we just have so many different artists, great artists, R&B artists, you know, that come from a church background. You know, and, right. and I think that they just need to speak on it. It is, it, it you don't have to uh, come across as the most religious individual, and if you think that it's tarnishing your 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 uh, your look or whatever it is you're going for, your you know what I mean. You don't have to really get in depth about it, but I think that touching on it and giving it light that your sound came from God, period. It's not a bad yeah. story to share. You know what I'm saying? And Period. So, definitely. And when you listen to some of the songs by some artists, one um, one song to me that definitely has a gospel influence and definitely is one of my favorite songs by her was Faith Evans Come Over, of course, with that, you know, organ chord, oh, you man. know, starting out. It's Faith Evans. And then. Faith Evans runs yes, and her man. vocals are most amazing. Yes. Like amazing. Son, she yes. is one of the. 
She is one of the greatest vocalists, female vocalists ever. And, you know, she gets props because people know. But I don't think that she actually gets the props she deserves. I don't think she gets the light she deserves because Faith Evans' vocals are so fucking amazing. And sometimes she could even, sometimes to me, me being a vocalist and me loving what I do, I listen to certain folks and I can tell when they didn't even try. She just hits some notes sometimes so effort, effortlessly. Mm-hmm. Effortless, you know, you know the word I'm looking for, yep. right? Yep, yep, Excuse me. But she hits she hits those ahead. notes. She hits those notes and she just goes ham sometimes and, and her sound is she's amazing. She's definitely amazing. Yeah. Man, I remember you know, hearing that first tr- first track I ever heard from Music Faith so was "Soon As I Get Home." Man, it just it it made your ha- hair stick out of your skin just the way she was hitting those certain notes. I'll make yeah. it up to you. Yeah, I can hit some notes like a girl. I could I could jump on a song and sound like a whole girl. Like who is that? Who, who's that girl? <laughs> not a girl. It's not a girl at all, bro. It's me. If that's not you, Tone. It's me, bro. And and, and you know, yeah. it's one thing about it, Sunshine, because when you're dealing with those, because when you're dealing with her heart, because you're, because I believe her, uh, I believe it was her mother who was a singer as well, so it was already in her genes. But when you're looking they, at her yeah. harmonization, yeah, her harmonization, her her pitch control, like you said, her run, um, you know, I mean, well, how your, her your voice, vocal cords, your your vocal cords, yeah, your, not everyone, but your vocal cords are somewhat of an instrument, you right, understand? right? And some people take it serious, some people don't, some people study their craft to the utmost, and some people just have it. Naturally, Faith Evans happens to be one of those individuals, I believe, that just have it naturally. Like, she naturally knows how to use her vocal cords as an instrument. Because let's just say, for instance, a jazz, a jazz trumpet player or a jazz saxophone player, a jazz flute player, they get that sound out by moving their fingers and they move their fingers as fast as they have to to get that, you know, the runs that they need to. Faith right. is one of those vocalists that utilize her vocal cords like an actual instrument, hitting them runs and them riffs and just octaves. You know what I mean? It, 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 there ain't too many people that have that raw ability. You know what I mean? Okay. So I'm gonna get. So we're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna throw out some names. And King, of course, will too. We'll throw out a couple of names, and we want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind, one word or just <laughs> however you. We got look, no, we got a couple hours, so we got time. You sure? Um, you sure? Yes, we I, do. Yes, we, I'm very truthful. We got time, so I'm going. So, uh, so we're going. So I'm going to throw out some. I'm going to co- throw out about two, three names, and then King's going to throw out some names as well. Okay, um, so here we go, Marvin Gaye. Great, greatest. Okay, uh, Nate Dogg. Genius. Okay, um, Nate and... Dog, Nate, Nate ahead, Dog is the is the goat. Nate Dogg is the to me Nate Dogg is the goat. He's the godfather of this R and B gangster shit. You know what I mean? So I call him the GOAT, greatest. Okay. Uh, Minnie Riverton. Say that again? Minnie Riverton. You know what? I'm going to have to tell you uh, that I'm not really familiar. Um, You know, she's a girl that sings that song. Loving you is easy because you're beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah, that's her. That's me. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, King. Go ahead and give him some names. <laughs> All right. You guys right. are catching me off guard, Prince. so it's like I'm, I'm trying. Friend. Oh man. 
fucking God. Excuse me, God. No disrespect. No, like, like no disrespect. Nobody can be God himself. But you, you, you said Prince, and it's like, huh? How do how do you describe? Wait, God. <laughs> he was one of a kind. He was one of a kind. No two ways about it. Oh um, man, Jesus Christ. I think like yeah. you know. I think I think he's the only one actually to me that and 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 and, and, and this is my opinion. This is my mm-hmm. opinion. I think you know if you ask me Michael the Prince, I just I'll just jump all up on Prince. Prince, of course. Prince all day. To me. Yeah, and I think but and yeah, yeah, I gotta say Prince too. I think Prince in terms of his musical style because this is a man who was so fluent who was so musically proficient, proficient, who was such, I mean, the man, genius does not even begin to describe the level of greatness that that man had. And Michael was great, but Michael Prince was just so Michael great. Was instrument. Yeah, Michael, yeah, Michael was great. Michael was great, but Michael was heavily influenced by a whole lot of people behind the scenes. You know, right. James and Brown, whatever. So many. It, what, Right, whatever he did and whatever he he, he 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 touched was amazing, but he was heavily influenced. I think that Prince was just more so a fearless cape crusader. Like when you watch, you know, when you watch the movie Purple Rain and you watch him on that motorcycle, he almost just looks like a fucking superhero on the bike with a <laughs> fucking cape flying behind him. You know. It's just he's it, it, yeah, straight out yeah, of a yeah. comic book. Like he's just like a fucking superhero, you know. And uh, with heels Michael on. Jackson was with heels on. The only man, the only man in the world that I feel comfortable calling one of my legends, one of my super duper iconic fucking figures, like that wears heels. It's cool. It's cool. He's a superhero. I think them heels got superpowers or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I right, let me try another one. Just by, I got, I got, right, I got you another one right here. Elder Barge. <laughs> oh man, Elder Barge, fucking insanely talented. Um, I would have to say a king too. He's like a king of this shit too. Man, his vocals yeah. were insane. He was insane. He was kind of different too when he came in the game. Him and his family, the the bars. You know, Chico the bars was dope too. The elder bars, fuck. Oh shit. Oh shit, Elder Bars. I would have to call him a fucking damn. Everybody's gonna get the goat. Uh, yeah, this everybody one here is gonna be a little goat. out of bounds here. This one here, this one here may go a little bit out of bounds. This may go into the comedy factor right here. Oh, Jermaine Lord. Jackson. Jermaine Jackson was fucking incredible too. He was just really uh how can I say it without being disrespectful? It's kind of flamboyant, but really too much. You know what I mean? Man but, had the but, meanest um, Jerry Curl. The meanest <laughs> Jerry Curl, but you can't but you can't take away the fact that he was really dope. I wouldn't call him a goat. I just wouldn't call him a goat. But I would say that he was dope. He was dope. You know? You know what? Jerry you know, Curl you know, came off the chain. Matt. <laughs> but you know, he was out before yeah. easy. <laughs> you said you said you said Jermaine, one thing that comes to mind is curl activator. <laughs> he a legend now, right there. Cause now, he got a he got a perm, a flat top, and a head scroll up there. Well, <laughs> Nobody I never know who could do that. Listen, all in the one. Now, now Sunshine, when you say that he was a bit flamboyant, now, do you think in terms of his vocal style, and obviously we just asked this for academics, it's not to, you know, create division or incendiary uh, no, in- no, inquisitive. No way. 
Um, but do you think? But do you think it was a situation where he was trying to, uh, in terms of mimic Michael? And we're just talking about his singing style. Do you think he was trying to be a little bit, trying to play on the level of what Michael had? Because Michael had a times a very, Michael could have a very uh, soothing falsetto. You know, he could even have a raspy tone at times. Um, no, Michael. You know, Michael. Jermaine, Michael. Let's let's let's. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead. Mike, Michael is a fucking pure genius. You know, like I said. Mm-hmm. The only man on this in the in the game that I could have possibly picked before Michael is Prince. But then there's Michael, you know, and Michael's vocal ability was insane as well. You know, his because he could cry, he could take it to church, he could, like you said, he can have a raspy sound. You know, uh, Michael almost can make it sound like there's four or five different people singing on one song if you if if you really pay attention to some of his songs. You know, um, yeah, you're right. Mike was a fucking genius. Now, and, in terms and you of know, vocal, and oh, go ahead, King, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say too, man. Like you know, while we talking about the legends and the geniuses, my introduction to you was when I first. Uh, bought the Yeah Baby joint in 2000, <laughs> and I was like, Yo, who is this cat here? Because you know he is blazing the, he's bringing the soul to this whole portal right here. Because Pun is Big Pun is a rapid spitter, just as fast as his mouth. You balance that out real well. So what was the experience like Appreciate working with it. the Yeah Baby album? Uh, so my introduction to Pun. My introduction to Pun. Keep in mind, I met I met Joe when I was thir- when I was about twelve, going on thirteen. Let's just say thirteen to be safe, because I always say thirteen. I met Pun when I was like sixteen, going on seventeen. You know, uh, that's when he started coming around the neighborhood a lot, and people started introducing him. You know, to 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 a lot of the folks in my neighborhood. Pun was like from down the block. He really wasn't from down the block. He had family that lived in Davison, and Davison was a project that was down the block and around the corner from Forest Project. Then there was a park called 23 Park that was right in the middle of both both places, Littleville, Davison, and then Forest, that 23 Park, and that's what uh, got everybody to come together because it was one park and everyone had to share that park. So people would get together and sit and rhyme and bang on mailboxes and come up with hooks and shit. You know, you know how it went back in the days in the cipher. And uh they used to bring pun around a lot. And one day they were playing basketball in twenty three park and a friend of ours came with someone else who said they so called sing. Now at this point, not too many people in the neighborhood knew that I can actually sing. You know what I mean? They they I was just, you know, one of the one of the the the, the, the the knucklehead kids from around the block. There were people that knew, but not too many people knew. And Pun and the people that I was hanging out with had no idea. So this kid starts singing, and he starts singing the Color Me Bad record. Do you remember that Dream On record? Yeah. Dream on, dream away. Dream away. I think I'm gonna, think I'm gonna have, to gonna have to stay. Yeah. Stay. Yeah, that one. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, so that record right there. So the kid starts singing and he's found so terrible. You know what I mean? And I look, mm-hmm. I'm looking at Pun, and I'm looking at the other two kids we with, and I'm looking at this guy singing. I'm like, come on, that's not how you sing the song. And he was like, so you sing it yourself. And I was like, bet. You know that I really love my baby. She can give me everything I need. You know, and I started going in. That nigga Pun got up, and he was like, what the fuck? What? God, you're like, God damn, that boy good. God damn, that boy good. Yeah, he was good. like, yo, do that shit again. <laughs> there is no one to take a play. You know, I started going in. Pun was like, man, listen, you you, 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 you with me. You're going to be my best friend. You don't even know it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Type shit. And you know. Pun wanted to be a singer himself. He wanted to be a soul singer. He loved to sing, but he ain't really had the vocals for it, you know. So working with Pun was pretty easy because he really, really appreciated my talent. He really loved what I did. He really believed in it. 
And, you know, he pretty he pretty much allowed me to be very creative on the Yeah Baby album on some of those records. You know, uh, and I was on all of those records and through the politics, the uh, It's So Hard record, if you really pay attention, is really me singing on that record and my backgrounds and things like that. And they brought in Darnell Jones and they had him sing one track on top of mine and pretty much gave him the lead, you know, to, mm-hmm. to, to do the lead. And that's how that came about. After Pun passed away, I guess they thought that, you know, since he wasn't here to promote the album himself, that they would have to create a bigger look with the collaboration. So Pun's idea of the Yeah Baby album and having me on those records were like introducing me to the world as an actual artist not just a guy that sings on the hook or, 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 or someone that, you know, aspires to be an artist. No, this is my, this is my little bro. He's an actual artist, and, you know, this is my introduction to you guys. So I was on it so hard. We had Mama. We had 100%. We had Laughing At You. We had, uh, it was quite my dick. We had quite a few records on there that made it like six or seven joints, and, that was his introduction, but after he passed away, you know, due to politics, they took me off some of the records, they kept me on some of them, and they got other artists to come and sing on them. You know, it's so hard. I I, I co-wrote that hook, um, laughing at you as well. Um, nah, it was pretty dope, man. I had a great time. I had a great time. I had a and great gonna, time working with Pun. And, and we're going to revisit some of that in a second, Sunshine, because I wanted to say this while my train of thought was still going, because if there's a song for me that is the signature of your indelible, incredible vocals, it has to be 100%. I mean, the, you know, the, the salsa beat, you know, the video, I mean, it just, the, the, the mute, the, the, I mean, it, I mean, there, I mean, where can I begin with it? I mean, from the visuals to the beat, to your vocals on it. I mean, it just it just resonates positivity, celebration, happiness, unity, good times, all things that are positive. What was that session like? Because to me, that song is just pure magic. Uh, pretty dope, man. It was pretty dope. You know, uh, after we recorded the actual record, you know, after we recorded the actual record and we was actually green lighted and all that uh, on the artistic side of it, then Sean mm-hmm. T, the producer of the of 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 the record itself, of the beat itself, he went and got a whole different uh, different idea, and then we brought in some live percussionist bongo players. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, you know, timbales, bongos, you know, the, we brought in real, actual, live percussion, and that, that sounded we played like it in the background. Session. Oh, yeah, it was live. I think Tony Touch is one of the only DJs on the planet Earth that has the percussion version. I don't know how he got his hands oh, wow. on it. Don't ask me. I asked him, and he didn't want to give up the source. But he has, he's one of the only DJs, if not the only DJ on the planet Earth that has the version with just the percussions, the bongos, the congas, the timbales, the, 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 you know. Oh, wow. He's the only one. So maybe one day you guys will get to hear that version, maybe not. You know, <clears throat> and it's one thing about it, man, because, you know, you were – you know, as you came along, as you were really developing, you know, uh, your talents in terms of really coming in, because I think we can say this in terms of as you came into hip hop, you know, you were the first Latin artist to really do, you know, hip hop vocals, you know, singing on tracks and having your songs as well. Of course, we already, yeah. you know, of course, we know hip hop culture, you know, 1520 yeah. Sedgwick Avenue, you know, the Bronx, that's where it started. You know, DJ Cool right. Hurt. You know, and then, of course, we, yep. you know, and it was an outlet for us black and brown people, you know. So, of course, we have the right. Rocksteady crew. Shout out to Crazy Legs and everybody, you know. Yep. DJ Tony Legend. Touch will come in. Yes, and I mean, Legend. of course, 
you know, Fat Joe, so you know, Fun with the legend. Men. Legend. Yeah. And of course, I got to shout out one, and I got to shout out another girl who was repping it on the, uh, on the um on the on the Latin side for hip hop, not named Jennifer Lopez, uh, but a girl by the name of, of Veronica. Shout out to Veronica. Oh yeah, I that was Joe's out. first female artist. Yep, I remember her. Yeah, yeah, first song. I remember with, with Veronica. That was the first single with Rodney yeah, yeah, yeah. producing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it. Yeah. Shout out to Veronica. I don't know her personally. I've never met her personally. I don't know her personally. Never shared a conversation mm-hmm. with her. She was before my time with Joe, but uh, I know who she is, and I remember the song. I think the song was pretty dope, and she was dope, so shout out to her. Yeah, so I mean, and I said that to say for, you know, the Latin influence, you know, it is definitely an integral part of the music growing as well, you know, uh, you know, in terms of it really, you know, really helping to push forward, you know, with the Latin shuffle, of course, you know, I mean, it just really, you know, among many, you know, it just really, I think, really shows the creative outlet that we all had. Um, now, getting into the business the album, side of things, as you were, the album you know, beginning very, to... What's the album uh, yeah. showcase the... Uh, yeah, I was saying, first of all, I would showcase a, a, a huge form of diversity, too. Even It showed that pun yeah. had a humor to it. Like, yeah. even laughing at it. Nah, pun, 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 pun was a super comedian. Uh, I am a super duper comedian. I'm always joking. I'm always playing games. Uh, you know, I, I can be I can be a very serious individual. Times, mm-hmm. but the majority of time, everything is fun and games, and I'm an upbeat, happy go lucky individual that wears his heart on his sleeve and doesn't know how to stop joking. So, you can imagine what the tour bus was like, you can imagine what the hotel rooms was like. You know, Pun was like, of course, like, let's just let's just call him the leader, you know, uh, mm-hmm. financially. Financially, he paid for everything on tour: the the hotel rooms, the the food, the 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 everything was under his name. We had to use his credit card, we had to use his ID, you know, for essentials and shit like that. So, if the rooms weren't under the label, the record label's name, then it was under Punchy. So naturally, he would be able to go and get all the keys to all the rooms, and that is oh, wow. exactly what he did. And that is exactly what Man. he did. So, so, you know, if you were sleeping at 2 o'clock in the morning in your room, fully covered with the AC going on, and you was a heavy sleeper, you were pretty much in trouble. <laughs> you know, so, so the super buckets of water filled with ice, you know. So one time we had this guy, I won't say his name, I'm, I'm going to keep him anonymous. We had this guy, mm-hmm. and, you know, we had spent a whole two days out working and out and about. So we finally got the chance to get to this hotel and go to sleep, and this guy went to bed, and he was half drunk. For some reason, he went to bed fully naked. He had the oh, AC oh. on full blast. He had the AC on full blast, and, of course, Pun had the key to the room. And he had us go and grab him a garbage can, but not like the small ones, but like the big, the big garbage cans with the handles, like the big, big joints. And he had us fill it up with half, half with ice and half with water. These are the, I'm talking about the garbage cans that you could fit a whole person in, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) so we got half of ice, half with water. This guy is snoring. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> you know how deep in sleep you have to be To let a man Pun size Go up in your room And for you to say you didn't hear him come in Plus Pun was yeah. very a, a swift big guy Pun was a very swift big guy So we opens the room It's dark in there The AC is on full blast This guy is fully clothed with his, I mean fully Fully uh Covered with the covers, but he's fully naked under. 
and he's breathing in, and he's breathing out, and he's snoring. Hunter's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. On one, on two, on three, and as Pun pulls the covers off, we dump the whole garbage can of water with ice on this dude. This guy was so tired that his brain stood sleeping, but his body got up and started running full speed ahead. He ran so hard, he banged into the wall on one side. His then he ran boom to the other side, boom, like three different times because his brain was sleeping, but his body reacted to the water and the ice. And Pun found this so funny. He started laughing so hard and not, 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 not for nothing. It was the most hilarious thing we had ever seen. But we could have killed this guy, you know. We could have killed him. So right. <clears throat> Pun was a super prankster, man. Don't get caught sleeping. Another time, this guy sends me. This guy wants me to watch The Water Boy with him, Pun. Watch The Water Boy with me. And Pun used to love that movie. So if we was on tour for 32 days, for 32 days straight, we would watch The Water Boy. He loved the movie. <laughs> he thought it was so hilarious, right? So one night he tells me, come on, watch The Water Boy with me. And I told him, yo, bro, I'm not watching The Water Boy again. I'm tired. <laughs> going to sleep. He's like, you're going to watch The Water Boy with me or else. I said, I'm not watching the water boy. So he's like, all right, cool. We're going to make a stop. Why don't you? Well, I think his call got Hello? I'm going to try to bring him back. 